Welcome to Novel Console, your weekly podcast where we talk about books, games, food, and stuff that caught our attention during the week. My name is Chris, and with me is my beautiful co-hostess and wife, Kerden. Hello! The more you say that, the more I think about Twinkies. Twinkies? Why Twinkies? Because yeah, Hostess, sitting Twinkies made by... Aren't they made by Hostess? I, uh, or are they? I don't know. I, I think about snack cakes. You think about snack cakes every time I say go hostess. Yeah. Well, you can thank uh, Danny for that. I know. He's, he's the one that suggested I, I start calling Well, no, you. he said it, and then I liked it. So I said you should do it, but now I think about snack cakes. <laughs> so it's Danny's fault. I don't want to be associated with snack cakes. Oh, uh, Danny. Just because I'm a chunky girl doesn't mean I want to be snack cake. <laughs> you don't want to be a, a dingling or a, no. a ho-ho or a... None of them. I don't a know. Devil cream or a something. A devil cake or something. An oatmeal cream a pie. Cake. That no, that's a little Debbie. Oh, I fucking hate zebra cakes. They're the worst thing ever invented. They're so waxy. They're weird. Why are they so waxy? I don't know, but I have never understood people in my family eating that shit. And the stupid Christmas trees that are the same thing, you know, that come out around Christmas. God, they're just repulsive repulsive but i've never liked packaged cookies or cakes or anything like that oh god they're pretty bad hey uh if this is your first time or your 102nd time coming to the show welcome uh we're glad you're joining us for an episode of a novel console we hope you stick around have some laughs and uh maybe find some new things to enjoy whether in orlando or in a food chain or video games or books related um or life related in general it doesn't matter. As sex long as you toys. Find new sex toys. Or new sex toys. You can enjoy our new sex toys. You like urethra play? Uh, there's no urethra play today. But <laughs> hopefully you get something out of this podcast about, uh, even if it's just some laughs, that'll be good and good enough for us. Um, if you want to reach out to us, you can do it on all our socials. We're basically a novel console everywhere that there's a social media aspect to it, um, except for LinkedIn, because we're not professionals. Um, and you can email us directly if you'd rather do that at uh, anowellconsole at gmail.com. Or if you would like to support us, you could do it at patreon.com slash console, where we have extra episodes, uh, Backlog of Dooms, which next week we're doing a Backlog of Doom for the month of August. Um, and uh, yeah, um, Karen, is there anything else you want to tell them? You can tell your friends to check out the show because every listen and review helps. We're on all socials and podcast streaming platforms, which you basically just said. Yeah, um, we got to fix that. <laughs> you told me to write this down and then you went and told my line. Anyway, please leave us a review wherever you can, like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you can leave a review, um, just because it helps us be more discoverable. And we're babies, so we need more discoverability. Something like that. That's not a word. Whatever. <laughs> okay. So if that caught you off guard is because I want to start doing this. I've been wanting to start doing Where this. Where I say more things. Yes. Um, in the beginning. Yes. And apart from that, the whole welcome thing. I've been wanting to do this since like episode 70 and I w always forgot. You know what we should say? And today I had a little bit extra time so I wrote it down. What you want to say? Karen. Welcome, foolish mortals, to the haunted mansion. Oh, Jesus Christ. Are I we... am your host, your ghost host. That's how I do welcomes. Kindly step all the way in, please. You're going to get us DMCA'd. Because I know the whole thing. We do not have the permits to say that stuff. So you I know stop. the whole thing. Well, that's too bad. You can't say it here. Lame. So I, I went over this whole thing with you before we started, and I told you about the... Uh, uh, all socials thing, and you still put it in there. Because I read you exactly what I was going to say. Uh, and you ignored me like you always you. do. I misunderstood. You always ignore no, me. No, I misunderstood. You always ignore me. I do not ignore you. Sure. When it counts. Anyways, uh, job update. It's fun. I like it. It's good. I feel like a professional. Um, everybody is a professional. Um, I am the least professional person there. He has the, imposter syndrome. I do have massive imposter syndrome, especially because I've had my ha hand inside the chest of a person wiggling around trying to find their heart. Stop! And all, and all these people have done IT for a long time, so I'm like, uh, uh, do I even belong here? And then I think, wait, I was a, a, a he healthcare professional. IT's not that hard. <laughs> so, no, it's, it's pretty good. It's great. I like it. I'm probably going to stay there for a very long time. 
Um, what about you, Karen? You have oh some... Oh, my God. You had a week, actually. <laughs> it's been something else. So uh, it's really funny that last week I literally just told everyone about my job things that were happening, right? Was it last week that I mentioned that? I know I mentioned it recently. I'm pretty sure it was It was, was last recently. Week. It might yeah. have been last week, yeah. Um, and uh, everything has changed <laughs> since then, <laughs> and not in a good way. Um, so basically... One day this past week at about three o'clock in the afternoon, we get this email to every single person in the organization sta- saying uh, that they're going to start staff reductions. And it's like, we're going to send out the staff reduction emails today. So you'll be getting an email shortly if you've been chosen to be snapped by Thanos. Um, that's what everybody on Reddit's posting memes of Thanos <laughs> snapping and like who, who got left, who got snapped. Um, and this is, this is also made the news. So I, really? I have a feeling some people, if like Burger Champ, if you really want to figure out where I work, you can go figure it out by searching. It's been on the news. It's on the news because they have to disclose it. They're legally required to disclose, like, how many people are being laid off and, like, what roles and stuff. So, like, somebody on Reddit found all the articles and broke down every single role. And, like, it's accurate for wow. Orlando, at least. So, uh, I'm assuming it's accurate for everywhere else. Like, my department, like, sp- the specific roles that were snapped are both listed there. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there were a lot. You, oh you need to find these like articles and send them to me. More than half of the Orlando location is gone. More than half. Anyway, um, yeah, so they sent out this email. <laughs> Within wow. five minutes, someone I knew got their individual email. Um, I did not get the email. Unfortunately. But, well, but... I literally accepted another job, <laughs> like as the email came in. So wait, no, didn't you accept no, another it, it, the job email the night came before? In, well, no, because I, I asked to think about it, but in my head, I had already accepted. Okay. The email came in, and I was like, "Oh, let me call it right now." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I, I at least found another job, like kind of out of nowhere ish. Um, cause I had not really been actively looking, even though I should have been considering that we knew something was bad was going to happen with everything that had already happened. Um, and I was just like being very casual about it and not really putting a ton of effort in. But then I saw this one job, I was like, oh, this would actually be really perfect for me. And I applied, uh, one night, two days later, they contacted me a day later, I had a phone screen with them, and two days later, I interviewed, and they hired me the next day. So, <laughs> I mean, everything happens for a reason, and I've been sitting here all week like, God, we 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 need to go to church, because I feel like the Lord has shown himself to me in a million different ways this past week. It's kind of crazy. But, um, yeah, so I, 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 I don't know. On, on one hand, like, I'm... I'm super grateful for how everything has worked out for me, but I feel so fucking bad for... <laughs> you got like, survivor syndrome. I do! I do! <laughs> I really fucking do, man! Oh, I feel like Tony. God, I, I don't want to feel like Tony, because then I'll die. What Tony? Tony Stark. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah, I feel real bad, because it... And, like, they're... I don't know. I don't know. It's It's just... It's a really shitty thing to have happened because so many people have worked there for so long. And even if it's not a great job and it's not a great company, it's a really cushy job. And it's a really good job for neurodivergent people. That's something that I didn't really think about. Like so many people who work there who just struggle with any other type of work. And this is really good for them because it involves like zero interaction zero and it pays decently well for being zero interaction you know Uh, yeah 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 so it's been a cluster fuck of a week Uh, yeah it was real fun having to call my boss after she set up a private phone call with me to tell me you're safe (laughs) and then i'm like uh sorry (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm <Peace> leaving. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. It, <laughs> it's also been fun while you've been going through that whole fun ordeal that our AC keeps fucking up. Oh, my God. So I woke, I don't know how you didn't wake up. I woke up yesterday morning, like, having fucking sweats and feeling like I couldn't breathe because our room had no air circulation. It's kind of insane how we have literally four fans going on us at all times. And that room can still get as hot as it does and feel like there's no air circulation. So I woke up thinking, because I, I got a really bad sunburn Friday. <laughs> I thought, oh man, my sunburn's really, really making me hot. God, I can't, I can't even breathe. I'm so hot from the sunburn. Then I came out of the room and I realized the whole apartment felt like that because our air conditioning was frozen. I took a picture of it and everything. The whole pipe was literally frozen like a hot dog in the freezer. It was so funny. Like Elsa attacked our air conditioning because this motherfucker keeps turning it down too low. Okay, so to be fair, I was cooking in fr on Friday, and I yeah. had a, all the burners going. Because you the were oven. cooking for multiple people. Yes. Yeah, you had the oven on too. And I had you to should have made the, the bacon on the stove. Oh no! I could have made it. No. Yeah. We don't fit in the kitchen together. I know. That's why we need a home. Yeah. A nursing home. A nursing home. <laughs> <laughs> With memory care. It's so it it's so annoying. The fucking AC just doesn't feel like it works right, and. I know it's because the fucking ducks are all dirty, and I told them, hey, can you clean the ducks? And they're like, no, because they'll break if we try to clean them. I'm like some bullshit. That's some bullshit-ass lie, you fucking liar. I'm going to call fucking roto Rooter or whatever the fuck that company's called to come clean the air ducts to see what they say. This apartment complex, I love it, but at the same time... I like our apartment. I hate fucking management. They're yeah. terrible. They Man charge us rent every month. What oh, the fuck my is God. that? But maintenance is good. Yeah, maintenance is good. That poor, that poor one guy comes here every single. I, I said to him yesterday when he showed up, "You might as well just move in at this point." With how often we have to call you, he giggled. <laughs> <laughs> it's always him. I'm I'm starting to believe that he's the only one who knows how to do everything. Probably, it's literally always him. Always, Probably. I haven't. Nobody else has come into this apartment in like a year, other than him. That's true. He also lives here, so. Well, all of them live here. No, they don't. Mm, I thought most of them did. I'm, I'm not sure. They get like steep discounts on rent if I they know, live here. I know he lives here. He lives down the road, like two uh, buildings down. But anyways. Anyway. Um, speaking of which, we have a friend that lives here who you loaned some books to. Yes. I think I've complained about it before. I don't remember. Marla, she reads like a fucking monster. And I loaned her an entire stack of books, like as tall as my torso stack of books. Three of them were graphic novels. So, yes, you could read those pretty quickly. But the other ones were like um, two fantasy books and like three romances, I think. I don't, I don't know. I didn't pick out the books. You did. She read all of them in two days. Mm. All of them in two Days, but she read two. If you ask her, she doesn't know the character names. Yeah, that's so that true. doesn't even count as reading that fast. She knows the plot, but she can't remember anybody's name. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> Makes me sick. So I sent her home with another like seven books night before last, and they're all long books. So I'm interested to see how quickly she, she reads yeah. these. Yeah. That's yeah, gonna be interesting. It's disgusting. How fast she reads. Yeah. If I could read as fast as she did as she does, I could I could read every book that I wanted to before I die. Yeah. Um also doesn't she not buy books because she reads them too fast? Exactly. Exactly. It's not um a good investment for her. Yeah. Because she reads them so quickly. That's why she likes Brandon Sanderson so much, because his books are so fucking long. That's why I like video games so much, because they're long and they either go up in value or lose it entirely. You never know after like 10 years owning a game. <laughs> so. You know, that doesn't seem like something that, I don't know, never mind. I, I told you, right, <laughs> last time I went to Cybertron, I sent you a picture of a game that was like $228, and you were like, you are not buying that. I'm like, I have it. I'm just showing you how much money this fucking game is. <laughs> it's ridiculous. 
It really is. Some of these games, they get up in price like so stupidly. Like, why? How? Why? It's just a game. Who knows? Fuck, I'll buy it. I'll spend the 200 and something dollars if I can. No, you will not. Oh, uh, yes, I will. Wait till I get another good check from my university. I'm going to spend it all on Metal Gear and oh my uh, God. A Fire Emblem. You know, that's not what they're for. Are you sure? Oh. I'll buy everything. Hey, we do have a sex toy this week. We do. Yes, we have something that was sent in by Thrak. I'm scared. I am too, until... Uh, did you look at it already? Yeah, I did. Oh, well, then you cheated. No, how did I cheat? You looked ahead. You're the one that can't look ahead, and I can't look ahead unless you find it. So here we go. Let's see what this thing is. Um, it is called the Rainbow Triple Play Butt Plug. What? So it looks like What a, the hell? It looks like a ninja star. Right? How the hell are you supposed to use that thing? One at a time, or with three, two other people. I'm sorry, but I am chunky. And most of the people I socialize with are chunky. Like, I feel like three chunky people couldn't make that work. Are you going to uh, share a butt plug with them? No. Oh, then why are you worried about oh it? Oh, my gosh. I'm just thinking about chunky people trying to use that at the same time. It's very colorful. It is very colorful. It's a rainbow butt, uh, butt plug. So it looks, <laughs> it kind of looks like an upside down Mercedes uh, Benz logo. And one of the ed and it's all three different sizes. So one side is small, the other one's medium, the other one is very large. And uh, basically, I, I know you're not going to get this, but some of the listeners are. I told Thrak that this was Yuffie's butt plug. Yuffie is a character from Final Fantasy VII, um, because she uses a giant ninja star that kind of looks like that as a weapon. This makes me think, did I mention watching How to Build a Sex Room last week? I don't think you did. So, uh, Marla told me I needed to watch this show on Netflix, and I'm like, no, I don't, I don't think that sounds like it would be my thing. And she's like, no, you don't understand. You need to watch it. Y'all, I sat down and watched the entire season in one day. The butt plug made me think of it because... This lady carries around, carries around her bag of tricks, the, the designer lady, and she's always got like a butt plug and some flogging tools and like dildos and shit that she shows to people. And she's like, how does this make you feel? She's like, Try what the fuck? Keep going. <laughs> she's like trying to get a feel for what they like and stuff. If you have not watched the show, you really, really need to. It's like, it's like, oh gosh, like HGTV meets sex it's yeah. so fucking good you need to watch it the designer melanie rose she is like the cutest funkiest little lady i think they told her she was like mary poppins for sex rooms <clears throat> she's she's amazing it's such a good show and she makes everything so pretty and there's a really really freaky couple in season uh, episode four so if you decide to watch it, you should let me know how you feel after episode four. <laughs> Maybe you're into that. I don't know. <laughs> no judgment here. But um, I I am not into the things that they are into, but it was very interesting watching them. Okay. So the triple play butt plug um, on the website that Thrax sent it to me, which is rainbowdepot.com, it is thirty ninety six, mm -hmm. right? Um, in amazon.com which is a website that i hate with all my heart oh my god i was like are you seriously explaining to people what the fuck amazon is because fuck jeff bezos oh, the rainbow triple play butt plug is 1849 that's why people love amazon that's literally half price almost basically about this item triple pay triple play butt plug is the perfect little tushy toy which allows tushy? The, which allows <laughs> the user Stanley Tucci? To from gentle to extra. That's what. <laughs> what? To from gentle to, to extra. From. <laughs> um, it does have a buy with option. Um, so it comes with uh, super fun penis candy, which is the little candy shaped penis, a uh, penis shaped candy, mm -hmm. <laughs> the candy shaped penises. <laughs> Lord. And a three foot tall inflatable penis for bachelorette parties that's why you said what the fuck earlier okay yeah all that you can buy for 39.29 so ten dollars more than it would cost to buy from the other site it's what it would cost um this has uh another product description allows the user to go from gentle to extreme during intimate and anal play 
The smooth contoured shape and super soft material it easily slips in without any discomfort. Um, it doesn't have any videos and it does have a 3.5 out of five reviews, but there's only one written review and it's a one star. It says poor quality all around novelty, poor quality, rock hard material, oh. definitely not silicone or rubber Oh, closer to plastic. Oh no, definitely not body safe as it's painted. I know this because the paint was rubbed off in the packing what? during shipping What? or was shipped damaged. Either way, please don't waste your money with this item as it's a disappointment and potentially hazardous to one's health. Buyer beware. <laughs> That's was, so bad. I thought this was going to be a thing where like, oh, the paint rubbed off inside me and I pooped out a rainbow poop. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't with you. I am a child. It's what you wanted it to be. I did wish it was that. It would have That would have made it so much more funny. Um, this thing is just, it's just interesting to look at. Uh, wow. It's, it's it, weird. It looks, um... Look yeah. at that. It also looks like it has a very sharp plastic edge. Now that you can zoom in on this picture. Um, you yeah, know. But yeah, uh, the uh, Rainbow Triple Play butt plug. Look at it on Amazon. It's, it's, mm. it's going gonna, it's gonna, to yeah, weird you out. Mm. All right. Are you ready for this week's uh, Read and Plays? I am ready. All right. So this is Read and Plays. All right, so like we mentioned last week, at the start of every read and place, we will have an update of whatever game and book we talked about the week before. Um, so let's just go ahead and throw this to Karen because I don't feel like talking about Assassin's Creed just yet. Cool. So in terms of what I talked about last week, I decided to DNF the astonishing color of after. I didn't want to because it does have such really high ratings. On Goodreads, and I, like I said, I, I know that uh, Jen liked it, but I just couldn't fucking get into it. It was so strange, and like, they they go to somewhere, Taiwan or somewhere, I don't remember where they go exactly, um, and Dad's like, oh, I can't take this, I'm just gonna leave you here with your grandparents that you've never met before, and he like walks out, and I'm like, okay, no... I'm over this. I can't get into it. So I, I went ahead and DNF'd that one. And to replace it, um, I started reading. Um, I went back to Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. I had started reading it as a library book like a year ago. <laughs> I don't know if it's been out for a year. I think it's like just at a year. Oops. Um, and then I bought a copy like with Christmas money or something because um, my library loan was due. I couldn't renew it because it was such a popular book. So I turned it back in with only having read like 50 pages of it, bought it. And I had other stuff that I was reading. So I put it away. And it's been sitting at the bottom of my book cart, like, hidden from me for the last however long. Um, so I picked that back up, and I honestly think I might DNF it, too. I don't know. I I, I really don't want to, because it's T.J. Klune. It's the guy who wrote The House in the Cerulean Sea. Right. Yeah, and okay. it's the, like, the, the cover is, like, the same art style as that cover was. And, like, I've heard that people say that The House in the Cerulean Sea is a warm hug, and under the whispering door is a shoulder to cry on. I am not feeling any sort of emotion reading this book. <laughs> None at all. And I, I know um, I had recommended it to your aunt after she read House in the and Sea and liked it. Um, I recommended it without having read it myself. <laughs> and she keeps telling me, oh, I really liked it. And I'm like, well, I still haven't read it. So, but I'm glad you liked it. Uh, but I know that Carmen did not enjoy it very much if i remember correctly um so i don't i don't know if i'll stick with it i'm trying i'm trying but i did read 
after years and years and years of having this on my shelf, the graphic novel adaptation of To Kill a Mockingbird. <laughs> Finally, not how to kill a mockingbird. Did it teach you how to kill a mockingbird? No, it's not called how to. It's to. Did it just, just teach to. you? No, to love it taught me that to kill the not killing to judge a mockingbird a man is by bad. The color no, that's not the message. Of their skin. <clears throat> no, no. no. Or to not judge or something. It's to not harm something that's not harming you. That's it. Something that does nothing but good in the world. You don't harm it. Mm. And that's Boo Riley and Tom Robinson. So, <laughs> Boo Radley. <laughs> yeah. That's so, why Luna's dad was named Scout, and the little boy dog that we got after him was named Boo. Boo. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. I see. Um, um, wow. You, you've you had, like, shit. Yeah. I, I'm really in a slump, like, big time. It's pretty bad. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I really still like Guild. And I'm going to keep reading it, but I also just have no motivation to read right now. I literally, yesterday, I was kind of hungover, <laughs> as you know, and I laid on the couch and played Disney Emoji Blitz all day Are you going to review a long. game? Am I going to review Disney Emoji Blitz? No. <laughs> I am not. It's Candy Crush with Disney characters. Oh, with Zoom Zoom characters. Um... But I, I did stop long enough to finish reading To Kill a Mockingbird, but I only had like 50 pages left. Like I said, it was a graphic novel. It's a massive so it, graphic it novel. It is massive. And I mean, they, it, it's a long, it's a long one. It's not just pictures. It's like, they didn't cut many corners they, from getting rid of the book. Text? Uh, not really. No. There's a lot of text, mm. but it's not big text. It's little it's text. It's little text. Yes. All over the place. Yes. Ugh. Um, It's a lot. So I, I stopped long enough just to finish that, and then I played and watched trash TV for the rest of the day. Yeah, you did. But um, it, I, oh, God. This is the first time I've read To Kill a Mockingbird, and I kind of see all the problems with it. But I struggle with understanding that it is historically accurate and thinking that it's not as bad because of that. But then, like, some of the things that Atticus says to the kids, I really don't agree with. Like, there's this really old, very racist lady in the book, and um, she's always mean to the kids. She says bad things about Atticus, because Atticus is defending Tom Robinson. Tom Robinson is a black man who's been accused of raping a young girl. He did not, in any way, shape, or form, rape this girl. Um, but she's like white from a white trash family. Her daddy's a drunk. They live on welfare. None of the kids, they all go to school one day a year and then they don't ever show up again. Um, just awful, poor, terrible people. Um, and if y'all you start yelling spoilers, this book has been out for like a fucking century almost at this point. Not, <laughs> no, not quite, but it's been out for a long time and it's part of most curriculums unless it's banned. So <laughs> this book you has should been, know. This book has been around for as long as racism has been bad. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> this book created the racism as oh bad. Oh God. <laughs> no. So Atticus <laughs> is defending Tom Robinson and a lot of people call him an inward lover. Because of the fact that he's defending Tom Robinson. But nobody else was going to defend the poor man. Um, so this old woman sees them walking by her house every day. And she's like, your daddy's nothing but a blah, blah, blah lover. You know, and says terrible, terrible things. And one day, uh, Jim, Jim and Scout, or Atticus's kids, Jim's boy, Scout's girl. Um, Jim's older. He like kicks her plants, her uh, carnation bushes or something like that. What? Camellias. No, no. <laughs> yes. My camellias. <laughs> wait, wait, my peonies. <laughs> Marigolds. Yes. I may not know my flowers, but, but I, I know, know a bitch, bitch when I see one. one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, 
So oh, I could just see that taking place in the South. It would be so funny. <laughs> it, the, yeah, this book takes place in uh, uh, Alabama. Oh, of course. Yeah. Sister fucking but country. Basically, uh, she tells the kids to make up for destroying her flowers. They got to come hang out with her and read to her for like two hours every day. Uh, Jim does, and Scout's gonna go with him because she always goes goes with him everywhere. And Atticus is like, "That's that's right. You got to go do that." And I'm like, mm, "A good daddy wouldn't make me hang out with a woman who says very terrible racist things." You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, and then it turns out that, like she's a morphine addict, and she starts having fits every day while they're trying to read to her, and then she finally dies. And Atticus is like, that's the bravest woman I ever knew. She was fighting her morphine addiction, and she didn't let it take her down. I'm like, eh, she's a really terrible racist person. I don't think she's the bravest person you ever knew. <laughs> just because she wanted to fight her morphine addiction. I just, things have just changed a lot in terms of, like, the way we think. Yeah, having um, an addiction doesn't make <laughs> it doesn't make them absolve you of all yeah. of your sins. Um, yeah, it, 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 I think it's funny that his name is Atticus because I just imagine like some three hundred looking dude in like the little speedo with like the armor carrying a shield, just in in court defending uh, his client from southern people. I think that's very very funny. Yeah, and like the the more I think about it, I still I still gave it five stars because I can I. I don't know. I can still appreciate that it's a good story and it is historically accurate. So, uh, I don't know. But I, it got me thinking. I have, I have still not read Ghost at a Watchman, which is, uh, the second book that she wrote that I don't think she wanted published, but her family published it when she was like beyond capable of having a say. Or was it after she died? I'm pretty sure they published it before she died. But I could be wrong. I don't I don't remember. I know that it published the day I had my interview with the company that I'm leaving seven years ago. Damn. Yeah. It came out that day because I was broke as fuck and I called my mom and was like, my interview went well and she sent me the money to go buy the book. <laughs> and I still haven't read it. I still haven't fucking read it. But um, that's funny. A lot of people say that it's terrible because you uh, like Atticus is a really awful racist old man. I'm like, I can see it more now because I'm like he he has morals, but at the end of the day, his morals still aren't quite up to code. And he I mean, never, one of, like, one of the says worst that things, he's not racist. I, I don't know. One of the worst things he does is is that he worships the Greek gods. I mean, you can't do that in Alabama. Because he has, he's a Spartan, right? You, His name is you Atticus. need to go somewhere else right now. Right? Go he fought in the away. War go away. Against Xerxes. Go right? away. Go away. Aru. Okay. So then I also decided to start reading The Atlas Six by... Olivia, Olivia, Olivia Blake. It's not Olivia. It's like Olivia with an E Olive. instead of an A. Olivia, Olive, Olivia, Olivia. No, it's V I E. Olivia, Olivia, Olivia. There's no accent mark. You don't need an accent mark. Have Have you seen how people spell Christian? Have you seen <laughs> <laughs> how people spell your name? Oh, Olivia. <laughs> Olivia Blake, somebody. Olive. The Atlas Six. Olive. Yeah, I started Olivier. reading that book. Now I'm gonna go look up when Harper Lee died and when Ghost Out of Watchmen published. Okay, so while you do that, I got an update from Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and that is that at 84 hours, I put it down to rest. I am done with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I didn't finish all of the DLCs. And I didn't finish some of the extra missions in the game, but I did finish the main story. And I stopped because I was doing a mission from the DLC and I was like, I'm not having fun. I'm just going to turn this shit off and stop because I am not having fun at all with this game. And fine, it's the gameplay is somewhat fun. The combat is entertaining. The raids are great because you get to go with your Viking boat up to a little river burg and invade it and steal all the riches riches and kill all of their people mm -hmm. which is great i mean it's it's um viking murder it's great um but 
I I feel like there's way too much to do and it's way too big and it tries to do so much. It tries to become the game that you play and you play nothing else. And it stays kind of like in the same formula for the DLC as well. It's like, these are your missions. Here's a whole ass map. Go explore it. Go do everything. And it's not everything is fun. Some of it is. But what's not fun is really not fun. And what's fun is just okay. Like, you understand what yeah. I'm trying to say? Yes. Yeah. Um, and I like Eivor. She's a great character. Um, she, because I didn't play a he, I never play a he. Um, Eivor is a great character. You like She's, girls too much. Yeah. Eivor is not as amazing as Cassandra. Cassandra is still the best Assassin's Creed protagonist in the whole series. Even better than Ezio. Fucking fight me. Um, but it, it was fun. It wasn't as great, but it was fun. And it was great to see uh, Viking culture, um, see what they believed in, how their religion worked, and how <laughs> what they thought about the Christian God. It's so funny. They, oh, dear. <laughs> they're like, uh, they see him like nailed to a, a, a cross, and they're like, oh, their God is so weak, he let people kill him and nail him up on a cross. Ours would have killed everyone. <laughs> so um, it, it has very funny moments because of the culture clash between mm -hmm. um, the Anglo-Saxons and the Vikings. Um, it, it's a fun game, but I don't think it is worth the $60 that it was when it came out. Oh. Because there's so much to do and well, having so much to do. You want to have stuff to do when you buy a sixty dollar game. You don't want to just finish right. it in like two hours, right? right. But it, I feel like it's way too much to do, and it's not really that fun. So paying sixty dollars for it, I would say twenty is a good price for it. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend playing this game. I gave this game like a seven on my list, and. It's more like a 6.5 disguised as a 7. Oh. Yeah, because uh, there, there was one particular mission that I absolutely fucking hated. I think I talked about it last week, where they're like, oh, I'm a king, but I want to get divorced. And then you help him get divorced and find his old lover. And then his wife, you take her to a boat and you defend her from people. And then you have sex with her and then you send her off. What the hell? And then uh, people start talking shit about the king because his old lover is living in the castle now. And she has a son by him. And it's just a mess. And the whole mission was just not fun. But I, I don't, I'm never going to replay this game. I'm never going to replay any of the new Assassin's Creed games. I might replay the Ezio collection at some point because those games are fun and they're short enough. And they're not drowned in shit to do, so they feel more manageable. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want a game that's going to last for fucking ever, then go ahead and play this game. There's a lot of stuff to do. It's not very handholdy. It kind of just throws you at shit and lets you figure shit out on your own, which I found kind of annoying, like uh, upgrading your armors and shit. It doesn't really tell you how to do it. Like, it just says, oh, use these items to upgrade it. But then after that, how do I upgrade it farther so I can make it stronger? Right. Um, that's a lot of shit like that that I really didn't like. But anyways, I, I jumped back into Pokemon Ultra Sun. Um, I started this game a long time ago, and I jumped back into it, and I started playing. I'm like, where the fuck am I? What am I supposed to do? And I'm just like... Sounds like me with Under the Whispering Door. Yeah. So it's What happened? A, it's in an island called Alola, which is a parallel to Hawaii. Alola. Alola, yeah. And... Um, Everybody's like, oh, around here, we don't say hello. We say Alola. And they're like, <laughs> did you get it? Alola. <laughs> and you go into somewhere like, Alola, what are you doing here? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm like at level 10 with all of my little Pokemons because I love that these new games have the experience share, which is you can just steamroll the whole game with one Pokemon and all the others gain experience as well as you're going with it. So I, I really like that. Um, the only problem is that the only times that I can play this game is at night. So I've only been playing this game at night. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so oh, it's Pokemon's... one of those yeah. that you wanted us to play together and talk to yeah. oh, Okay. Yeah. So all, all, every time it's nighttime because I can only play after six. And after six, it's already nighttime in Pokemon. That's annoying. Um, so I'm never going to catch any daytime Pokemons if there are any specific daytime Pokemons. But yeah, I, I started and I was like, 
what the fuck am I supposed to do? And I just started going and I start finding fights and I'm like, oh, okay. Then if I find a fight, then this is pretty much the way that I'm supposed to go. Oh my goodness. Because if you go backwards, there's no fights because you beat everyone already. Um, I still don't know what the gyms are. I still don't know how the hell you advance in the story other than just keep walking forward. Because this Pokemon game is like super linear. Mo they're mostly linear, but this one is like straight to the point and and that's it um it's it's somewhat fun i kind of do like it i think somewhat I, yeah i because uh, early pokemon games they're so easy and non-challenging that they're not fun and the combat is not deep at all so like you go into a fight and your moves are scratch and leer and the only one that does damage is scratch mm -hmm. so you just hit scratch until you level up enough where you get ember and then after you get Ember, then you get some other ability and your Pokemon evolves. And then other types start coming into the combat that start making you have to do um, change up your tactics. And that's when it starts getting fun. But first, when you start it off, it's just steamroll, just fight, go straight through. And uh, pretty much is challengeless. So I, I'm going to keep at it because I feel like at, at sometime soon it's going to break. I feel like all the hand hold the introduction parts of the game are done um but i, I don't know I'll, I'll keep at it i'm gonna keep plugging away at it for a little bit and uh when i'm not plugging away at pokemon guess what i'm gonna be doing Carden? what oh wait no i know i know pressure washing power washing pressure washing power washing power washing either or oh yeah i started playing power wash simulator on the you Xbox. should write my name on something I should. Mm -hmm. I, you, I can, because it has the, the straight nozzle that lets you shoot straight. Write my name on something. Yes. And uh, let me see. All right. Karen loves penis. I hate you. <laughs> it's a death stare. I started playing uh, Power Wash Simulator on Xbox, because it's on Game Pass. And I, 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 I've been looking at this game since it came out on PC. And I was like, God, I wish it would get ported to console so I could play it. And they finally put it a, f uh, a week or so ago on Game Pass. And I downloaded it this week. And yesterday I had a chance to sit down. I played for like six hours straight. I had to get up and close the door leading to this room because it just sounded like a static TV. And it was driving me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Drove me batty. I was like, I can't take this shit. It's so much fun. So it's first person. You have your little water gun with your different nozzles for pressure, and you just clean dirt off of shit. Like, uh, depending on what type of dirt is on whatever you're cleaning, you have to use a different nozzle. So there's the zero point nozzle, which does a straight stream of water to clean anything, but it doesn't have much reach. Uh, there's the 25, which is a little bit bigger, but it still has a lot of pressure. Then there's the 45, which is the big uh, one that's kind of like sweeping and still has pressure. And then there's like the 75, which does absolutely nothing. <laughs> it's the 75 you use it if you're going to sweep shit away with the water. Um, let's say there's leaves or dirt or whatever. You just use this 75. I used to do power washing, so it makes me happy. Um, but uh, you get like contracts to clean shit. Like the first con contract is like, oh, clean this van. And you got to power wash a van completely. You got to wash the hood, the glasses, the roof, everything. And the thing is that I, <laughs> when I started playing it, I'm like washing it. And I'm like washing, watching my, uh, my uh, nozzles because I, when I was power washing, there was a time when I was like cleaning a part of the ground and I was using the wrong nozzle and I broke the concrete. What? Yeah, it gets so strong that you, can, that you can break concrete. Yeah, that I used to do it barefoot, so I would have cuts all over my feet from the water because sometimes I would not pay attention to my feet and oh just my gosh. Like, peel my fucking skin off. Way to go. Yeah. So anyway, so I was like, oh, sh I got to wash my, my, my uh, nozzles. And I was using the zero point nozzle to clean the glass on the car, and I accidentally hit one of the fog lights, and it goes like, Clink. And I'm like, oh, shit, I broke it. <laughs> and I thought that they would deduct money from the job or whatever. Mm -hmm. But no, it went clink because I cleared the goal that was to clean the uh, the fucking fog oh. lights. So I did the other one and I go, did that and I looked at the notification on the car. I'm like, oh, okay. So I just kept, you know, washing the fucking car. 
And as I was watching, I kept getting text messages for other jobs that you can go do. And there was one that was a whole playground. It was like benches, trash cans, um, fucking monkey bars, castles, towers, two story. I remember you with your playground. Mm -hmm. And then it had uh, the rubber mats all over the floor that playgrounds have. Um, they're like old rubber and they're colored and shit. And you had to clean all of that, the edge of it, the fucking benches, the trash cans, the whole uh, jungle gym set. And it, it that one took me like two and a half hours just to clean. And I was having so much fun. My goodness. Oh, my God. And then I noticed that whenever you get paid, as you're doing your jobs and you're getting paid, you can use that money to buy better equipment. So you can buy better gun, uh, longer um, uh nozzle for it uh different uh heads for your washer um, you can even buy like a spray bottle where you can put liquid in detergent to mm -hmm. help the cleaning go faster that's it's, cool it's so entertaining i really really like this game i think i'm gonna keep going with it because it is a ton of fun and i don't even have to think when i'm doing it and that is the best part like, I, I, I was playing, and I'm like, my dad would love this game. So I just called him. I was like, hey. He's like, what? I was like, guess what I'm doing? He's like, what? Like, I'm pressure washing some shit right now. <laughs> He's like, what? What did he say? I'm like, what? He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm playing a game called Power Wash Simulator. So I'm I'm cleaning out a backyard <laughs> with a power washer. It's like just washing the dog house, <laughs> the food bowl, the fucking chairs, everything. It's so much fun. It's Maybe I'll try to play it once I get used to my motion sickness goggles. It's... <sighs> Yeah, you did buy motion sickness goggles I for did. Mario Kart. I did. Yeah, you got to train them this. Use them this week. I do. We can we can play Mario Kart ourselves, mm -hmm. so I can practice, and I can watch you play that. Yeah. Um. I and hopefully not puke. Okay. So I, I kind of came to a, an agreement with myself. With yourself. Um, yes. Uh huh. With my morals. Uh uh huh. I am gonna talk about Diablo at some point. Even though fuck Bobby Kotick and fuck Activision. Uh huh. Because the employees at Activision don't deserve to get punished because of the fucking superiors at the company. True. It's also not like we have a huge listenership, so everybody's going to go out and buy Diablo. I guess that, that, <laughs> yeah. If we had some huge platform, maybe not. Yeah. I mean, like you have like big uh, podcasts like Get Played, they talk about Diablo nonstop. We do not have a big podcast. Um, and then they make um, a fucking cold opens where they're making fun of the war in, in a, what's it called? No, they don't. Oh, God, it was so bad. No, I they like, don't. Why would you do this? That's so fucked up. Yeah. Anyways, if they can do it, we're not going to make fun of the war. But <laughs> um, yeah, no, definitely. We can, I guess we can talk about Diablo. So I do want to go through Diablo with you because I've never beaten a Diablo game. I think it would be fun for us to play because it's not complicated. As long as my motion sickness goggles work. It's isometric, so I think you'll be fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, anyways, um, I think Power Wash Simulator is one of the greatest games I've ever played. And I am beyond excited to keep playing it because it is just so much damn fun. So, uh, I, I might have updates throughout the following weeks because there's like a career mode, there's challenge modes, there's. Uh, I think there's a time attack, all that shit. So also, mm -hmm. Ghost of the Watchmen was published about a year before Harper Lee died, but I was reading the Wikipedia, and it sounds like one of her family members went into her safety de deposit box and found the draft and mm. published it. Because I th I think she was kind of gone at that point, like not really mentally there. But I could be wrong about that. But, yeah, basically published it, like, without her. Like, gave it over to the agent. I was like, here's this book! I mean... Go for it! Oh, you gotta think like, what I'm was going... Like, I'm pretty sure she had it in a safety deposit box and didn't do anything with it for a reason. But what is the reason? Why would you have it in a safety deposit box and not just burn it? Good question. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. So maybe she, she was wanted... good friends with Truman Capote. Really? Yes. Hmm. I made my parents watch that movie and they hated it. Capote? Yeah. He's dead. I, yeah, I think He's so. He's that one who was in Hunger Games. Didn't he OD? Uh, yeah, um, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah, him. Sad day. Yeah, yeah, that was that was wild. He was a good actor. 
Yeah, he was. He was really good in Hunger Games. <laughs> you know, I saw there's a trending sound on uh, Instagram right now. It might be from Book Talk, but it's like the the book that got me into reading, mm -hmm. and it's this one. Somebody posted that the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is the mm. book that got them into reading. At, like, what? At least it wasn't Mein Kampf. Oh, my God. I'm Mein Kampf. <laughs> I'm fucking crazy. I mean, that's true. That would be Looney Tune. I don't even know. That would be wackadoo. Yeah. All right. Are you ready for Give Me the Gorbage? I'm ready for Give Me the Gorbage. All right. That is Give Me the Gorbage. This week's Mini Gorbage is brought to you by Create Coffee Plus Studio. That is Create with a Q. They didn't bring it. They didn't uh, sponsor it. <laughs> she said oh, it yeah. Weird. Brought to you by it. Yeah, no, they didn't sponsor it. I'm just being weird. No. Yeah, <laughs> they don't know who the fuck we are. Um, so... You saw this place on TikTok last night? Is that how yeah, we um, wound up going there? <laughs> because we're sitting oh, on the couch, yeah, snuggling, watching whatever the fuck it was. Oh, we were watching my trash TV, arranged on Discovery Plus, if anyone would like to check it out. I realized last night that there's a second season, so brace yourself for that, my love. Um, so I, I, uh, I found this place out because of Iram the photo on tiktok um he's a photographer from central florida and he goes to certain places and takes pictures and whatnot and he posted this place um create coffee plus studio um and it looked pretty great the uh he posted the uh lavender lemonade and what i had which is the korean uh, cream cheese garlic bread uh, the pearl and the, and the cream cheese garlic bread. Oh. No, he didn't post a cream cheese oh, garlic bread. Oh, I thought he bread. did. No. Oops. I just No, that's from it. there on TikTok. I saw oh. that there and I was like, ooh, that looks actually really fucking good. I really want to try that. Um, all right, can, continue. So, yeah, it's in downtown Orlando off of Mills. Uh, so, it's a really hipstery place. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we were sitting there watching my trash TV and hubby's like what time are you gonna wake up in the morning and i'm like what the fuck it's sunday aka the day that you normally stay up later than me on saturday nights and text me saying don't wake me up unless the apartment's on fire blah blah blah. let me sleep and you're asking me what time i'm gonna wake up on a sunday and i'm like i don't fucking know i'm not gonna set an alarm i want to sleep you're like, oh, well, I thought we could go to this coffee place downtown. I'm like, who are you and what have you done with my husband? Because one, you don't like to wake up. And two, you fucking hate downtown and you bitch about it anytime somebody brings it up. Okay. All right. In my defense, in my defense, everything looked really fucking good in this video. And I started looking at their TikTok. So TikTok, I just need I'm to like, find, oh, shit. <laughs> anytime I want to go downtown to do something, like take pictures, I need to find something yummy nearby and show you a TikTok of it to make you go. Okay, so another thing that drew me in, it's not expensive at all. It's it not is, expensive. It is super well-priced. Yeah, for what it is. I actually feel like we scammed them because the shit that we got felt way more high price than what we paid for. Oh my gosh, don't tell them that, please. You guys are undercharging. I wanted to be affordable forever. So, we uh we got up this morning, still we didn't wake up early, but he woke up earlier than I did. It was crazy. And uh we went to this place. It is off of Mills, like I said, but it's off uh, off of like a side street and this fucker was sitting on the side of the street in one of the only parallel spaces that was open and just like hanging out on the sidewalk and wouldn't move while we were trying to squeeze into this spot. So Chris like backed up super close to the car behind us. And of course those people came up to their car right as we were getting out. And the guy's like, yo man, can you like pull up a little bit? So then we almost hit this dude who's still no, sitting no, the, there. The funny thing is like, he's sitting there and I'm moving forward 
And like he, he sees, didn't even flinch, did he? he? Sees the, no, he saw the bumper get close to him. He kind of like looks at it, and like I stop, and he just starts looking forward again. I'm like what the fuck, dude? It's like I thought you were gonna get up. Oh my god, I I like when I heard that guy say that to you. I was hoping that he was saying it to the dude. Like, can you get up? I'm sure he didn't. No, him. yeah, he probably didn't because no. he was kind of hidden. Yeah, um, it was really annoying though. But uh, so that that part was like the only bad part about getting in there. Because you do have to parallel park on that little side street where apparently idiots want to sit there. in the open spaces. Because why not? Um, but the place is really cute. They've got lots of greenery and they have the little photo studio in the back randomly. It's kind of weird, but... It's kind of cool, though. I mean, yeah, I, I noticed on their Instagram they take like their merch pictures back there. Like have people in their t-shirts and stuff. I see. And take pictures. I like the wall with all the words. I, I, I did, honestly, I didn't read any of them, but they they look styli- stylized and whatnot. They look pretty cool. And apparently in the last couple of months, I think it's said in June, they had like a BTS event and they had like BTS backdrops that you could take pictures with. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Huh. But I wonder so if they, they, they would do that, but like books to for books to grammars, Orlando books for grammars, you just go there and take pictures and shit, bring props and whatnot for the studio. Maybe. Wall Crawl talked about doing it that one time and they asked me who the ringleader of Bookstagram would be and I suggested somebody with a ton of followers and all she did was take her little friend group and didn't tell Anybody else? Anybody else on Bookstagram in Central Florida. It's okay. I didn't care for any of those people, so it was fine. Uh, Anyways. (laughs) I wouldn't have fit in with that crowd. I don't fit in with any crowd. No, you don't even fit in with a crowd in this apartment. Hey, this is my baby. That's my dog. No, that's my baby. Anyways. um, Let's... uh, Is there anything else you want to say before we get into the food? No. Okay, I do. Um, This place looks super hipstery yes looks very hipster just looks but there are more everyday people there Th- there are a lot of us people there and hipsters but also like one or two it wasn't exclusively hipsters yeah it didn't feel like how you would feel going to a foxdale yeah where everybody's just stuck up their own fucking ass just drinking their hoity-toity fucking mediocre coffee that they paid double the price that we paid for a smaller cup exactly yeah this place is fucking cool. I really like this place. Um, I, I I love the smell of the place. The place just smelled so good. It smelled like fresh coffee, like pastries, like baking. It, it smells like what a coffee shop should smell like. Um, and I appreciate that the seats were comfortable. Even though they were metal seats, they were pretty comfortable. Um, I absolutely loved the service. Um, they were super... Um, uh, serviceable, right? Is that a word? Chill, down yeah. to earth, like, nice. Like they were just there working, enjoying what they were doing, and just trying to give a good service. I, yeah. I really like that. Um, the menu is limited. <laughs> And yet overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of options I, for drinks, especially. Yeah, because I was trying to find the lavender tea, because you picked the one that I wanted to drink. You could have gotten it, too. No. It wasn't like it was against the rules for us to get the same drink. We're going to talk about the same drink twice. <laughs> I mean, we can both talk about what we love. Oh. Just fine. Anyways, I was looking for the lavender tea lemonade, but I was looking for lemonades. And I couldn't find it. It was under teas all the way at the bottom. It said lavender, lemonade, oh. whatever. Um, they do have a bunch of stuff in this place for you to try out. They have foods. They have uh, garlic bread with cream cheese. Um, they have sandos. They have egg egg and, and sausage croissants. So typical like breakfast stuff. And the... Uh, um, the coffee, it is so good. What I had was called uh, the uh, the pearl, the uh, shining pearl. Let me look at I it. I think so. I'm a fucking idiot because I had this website pulled up exactly where I wanted to read from. It is called the purple pearl. Um, it has taro in it. It is so delicious. It is so rich. And the coffee flavor is so good. It tastes like real delicious coffee with 
uh, cream. I, I uh, he asked me what type of uh, milk I wanted, and I panicked and I said just regular. <laughs> I don't fucking know what type of milk I want. Almond. It's like, <laughs> it's like macadamia milk. <laughs> um, but it's five ninety five, so it's like six bucks for a decent sized cup of coffee that tastes really freaking good. The garlic bread I thought was fantastic, but you hated it. But it's Yeah, I did not care for it. But it's because it's sweet and savory and the cream cheese is very it's, it's somewhat too sweet. sweet. It's too sweet. It's yeah, no, it didn't work for me. I can see it not working for somebody, but for me, I think it was really good because it was, I I think the bun was a brioche bun. It's cut into slices and it has cream cheese in between the slices apart from the garlic butter and whatnot. It looks amazing. It's made really well. The if if is... I could have had the two components separate. <laughs> You would have liked it? Yeah, if, you... if I could have had like a cream cheese Danish with the cream cheese and just the bread with butter, you know. And the garlic separate? Yeah, or if they'd like if they'd like taken the cream cheese and made it savory, like like how you do with the chicken dip for instance, you okay. know. I can see that. I uh, that and see that's what I thought that it would have been like cuz when you first showed it to me last night, I was like, "Oh, with cream cheese." That's not... but and then I'm thinking, "No, they surely they made the cream cheese savory." Um, nope. <laughs> nope it's just like a sugar bomb inside of garlic bread see you no did, thank you you didn't like it i i loved it i did not because brioche is at least that's what i think it is because the bread was somewhat sweet itself yeah but that plus the cream cheese it was just too so much. it plus the cream cheese with a little bit of garlic on top for me it worked it worked very well because and it's I imagine not it would over... work for most people yeah yeah it, it the garlic is not overwhelming so it it has a perfect like little bit of garlic flavor with the cream cheese. I think it all works very well. I particularly liked biting into the bread because it was crunchy and soft and hot and it just felt great. It, and it was super easy to pull apart. It, it, except when we got it, it was so hot that the box was hot. Yeah. <laughs> I wish they'd given it to us on a plate. I mean, I noticed some other people had plates. I mean, they might have asked for it. I don't. I don't know. And it's so small; like, it's not like you wouldn't be able to eat the whole thing in one <laughs> sitting. <laughs> they give you. They give you a shoebox for something that's the size of a, 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 a fucking little quiche. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Anyways, no, I think that was fantastic. I think that thing was awesome. I think my coffee was great. This is probably one of the best coffees I have had in a coffee place here in Orlando. Then again, I make my own coffee. Because <laughs> he hates Starbucks. I fucking hate Starbucks. I just want a latte. I mean... I love lattes. Lattes are pretty good. I can't make a latte for myself. No. We should buy the, the equipment to make a latte. A latte maker? Yeah. Are they as big as what Justin has? So that's they are. massive. They are. That's way They're too big. Good. We don't have counter space for um, that shit. So you had the Incredible Hulk. I did. So it's green apple lemonade with a splash of lavender tea. Uh, you got to go look at our Instagram or Facebook to see a picture of how cool this drink looks. If you refuse to go on socials, then just go to Create's Coffee website. Yeah, just uh, create what a Q, Q-R-E-A-T-E coffee dot, dot com. com. Um, so it's uh, green apple lemonade, lavender tea, and they do this cool, uh, like they put the green apple on the bottom and then the lavender tea on top. So it's the like very s divided green and purple. Um, it's very, very tasty. The thing that drew me in was the green apple lemonade part. I was like, what? Green apple lemonade? I love green apple shit. It was so tasty and so refreshing. I loved it. I loved it. And it wasn't really that tart. It was like just the perfect amount of tart and sweetness. Yeah. yeah it wasn't yeah. overly tart or overly sweet. It was and real it, good. And it did have a distinct flavor of... Green apple. And lemonade at yeah. the same time. Yeah. You can tell apart both fruits. It didn't just taste like one or the yeah. other. Yeah. I didn't really get much lavender tea at the end. It still tasted like green apple to me, but I mean, it was still good. So I mean, because they, they, they layered it. So, yeah, and like the the tea is kind of like where the ice is, so I'm guessing it gets watered down, so the lavender flavor. Yeah, is lost. that's true. 
It's, I mean, still very tasty. Yeah, it was, it was very pretty refreshing. Good. Um, I, I caught myself when I saw the girl walking towards us with the drinks, and I saw yours and mine. How colorful they are because these are fucking colorful. They're beautiful. I just started smiling like a fucking idiot. Like, holy shit, that is so cool. There's, all of their <laughs> drinks are so pretty. If you look at their Instagram, mm -hmm. their drinks are gorgeous. The pictures that they've taken on them that they have on their website are pretty freaking great looking. Uh, the purple pearl looks amazing. Um, they have signature lot uh, drinks. They have seasonal drinks, uh, which they have one called the hot ass lemonade, which is a spicy lemonade that I thought about getting. Um, that's the incredible Hulk cookies and cream latte. They, they have some really, really cool stuff. Um, I wouldn't mind going back there. Oh, I definitely want to go back there. I want to try all their drinks. Yep. Yeah, all have, of them. Oh shit. They have one called the Cola Brew. It's Coke and coffee. I hope it's better than that shitty one from that you can buy at the store. Oh man. They had St. Patrick's Day drinks. Hmm. <laughs> Lame. We missed it. Um, and I see. They had a key lime pie latte topped with coconut green foam and graham cracker crumble. Fuck my life. Yeah, that's very, a very Carolyn drink. Um, I see here that they have matchas and their matchas look really good. And they have matcha latte, dirty matcha, the strawberry matcha, or the taro matcha. I just love the taro so That much. is a beautiful photo of your drink. Mm hmm. I mm -hmm. want to go back right now. Your drink tasted like a cookie. To you? Yeah. A taro is so soft and so rich and creamy that it's just, it just gives that uh, rich scrumptiousness to it. Rich scrumptiousness. That it touches. You and, sound like Gollum. Give it to us raw and wriggling. <laughs> oh, God. Um, I, I loved it. I, I would drink many, many more of those. Um, I just... The only complaint that I have is that I wish that they weren't in mills because it's way too far away from work. <laughs> yeah. Like if they had like a, a shop here in East Orlando near where I work, I would pop in there every fucking that day. That would be so awesome. <laughs> I would be so happy. I would be a number one customer. I would have many, many uh, printed out punch cards. Uh, what's that? It's a s'mores latte and they were scorching the marshmallows on top. Nice. Oh my God nice all right so are you ready to give this um place a score it's garbage it's garbage it's garbage okay so for brand new listeners of the show garbage means that it is the highest of the highest price that we can give no anyone. it's not yes it is god tier garbage that is for exceptional yeah places, places that don't come it never happens <laughs> no it's, it's only happened once it's only happened once um but garbage is the best of the best. Um, garbage would be the worst of the worst. Yes. So this place is garbage. It's yes. Definitely garbage. This place, everybody says to me, where can I get good coffee? Fucking Good, create, unique coffee. Create Coffee Plus Studio. Yeah, that would be the place. We nah. will be going back to have more like, Oh, what about Foxdale? Fucking avoid Foxdale. The place has no soul. All right. So are we ready to end the episode? We are. All right. So uh, I guess that's it, for, that's it for this week's episode of A Novel Console. Um, do you want to say goodbye to everyone, Karen? Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>